welcome to this video. I hope you will find it useful. Um, I haven't got uh, a script. I've got uh, a set of notes and we're going to rattle through them. But please do look at what's on the website and also in the notes for runners which I've sent out to you. The big change about this year obviously is COVID-19. We've actually we've, we've had to make a lot of changes to, to make the whole thing suitable. So this year we're, we're very much going to be social uh, separation, social distancing, two metres. And we've done as much as possible to do this all the way through the whole event and reduce the spread of the virus. Um, in particular, relating to that, the first thing is we must say, please do not come to the Clarendon if you're in a risk category or if you aren't feeling well or if you think you may have been in close proximity with the virus recently, or if you're in a lockdown area, okay? Any of those reasons, uh, obviously, please do not come, come to the Clarendon this year. Um, second thing is mass starts. We're not going to have a mass start this year. Um, I know it's a bit of a pity because it's lovely when we all get together and we all spill through the, um, the race arch, but this year we're very much spreading things out. Uh, so there won't be any mass starts. Overtaking, as you know, probably 90% of the Clarendon Trail is pretty wide, so overtaking on most of it won't be a problem at all. But there's some narrow parts, um, and a couple of them are quite long. So if you get stuck at a narrow part, um, you, you please respect everyone's social distance. You will just have to stay behind the person in front of you. Don't pressurise them. And likewise, if you're the person in front, don't feel pressurised. Obviously, try and move over when it's suitable to move over. But in the meantime, people will just have to, to go through it in an orderly file. Um, we have got two places um, on the trail. One is near Hoplands. There's about a 500 metre stretch. And the other one is near the three mile marker. There's about a 400 metre stretch. But the rest of the, the trail should be pretty good. So no, no problems there. Um, two metre social distancing I've just covered. That's the real key. If we're all at least two metres apart from each other, um, we should be no problems. And of course, if you're actually following, running behind a runner, you should really try and run behind a little bit further than two metres um, to keep out of their slipstream. Um, no problem. Face masks. We all need to bring face masks this year. You'll need to wear them when you're in close proximity, especially if you're on one of the buses and also as you file through the registration um, places. Um, if we can ask people to wear face masks. The um, rest of the time while you're running you shouldn't really need to wear a face mask. Most of the marshals out on the field will be also able to maintain a two metre distance so they won't need to wear face masks. The people at the water stations obviously will um, and everybody should be carrying a face mask with them so that if you find you're in a situation where two metre distancing is difficult then obviously pop your face mask on. Uh, that's important. Buses I think I've got a bus sign here. There we go. We have buses, so you can catch a bus beforehand to go from Winchester to the start and then run back to Winchester. Um, or you can park your car at the start, run to Winchester and then get the bus back. The buses in the morning usually are quite uh, high demand. Buses in the afternoon, uh, no problem at all. It's, they're usually only half full. We are saying to everybody, Please only use the bus if you really need to. If you can arrange someone in your social bubble to actually give you a lift, that would be great. So the more of you that actually arrange your own transport, the better. That, that will help all of us. Race numbers. Race numbers for the, the relay and the marathon have been sent out in the post, but the rest of the race numbers for the five mile mini and for the half marathon, you'll actually pick up at the start line. Um, so um, please be, 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 be ready to pick those up. If you forget your race number, that's obviously going to create lots and lots of difficulties for us. It's going to make us very, very unhappy. But if you do forget your race number, obviously come and talk to us and we'll try and see what we can sort out. So if you have your race number posted to you in the marathon or the relay, please make sure that you bring those with you. Um, we also have safety pins. I think you'll find that it doesn't have the safety pins in the mail, but you'll be able to collect the safety pins when you actually get here, if you have actually haven't got your own safety pins. Um, and at the end, please put your safety pins into the um, safety pin collection bowl because we, we try and recycle those each year. That's straightforward. Um, cups of water. 
We've got various drink stations in all the locations that we had last time, plus we've actually got an extra one towards the end. So we're missing one and we're gaining one, so it's 13 drink stations all the way along. We're not giving up food this year, um, obviously because of uh, COVID situation, having a plate full of flapjacks isn't a, a good idea. So all the water stations will just have marshals giving out water. They will have a jug like this, which has got a top on it, and as you come up to the actual um, marshal station, you should hold your cup out at arm's length, and the marshal will hold their jug at arm's length and top up your cup for you. We're not handing out cups, so please bring um, your own cup with you. We're asking everybody to bring your own cup with you, including the, the real super fast runners. There won't be piles of cups, open cups, full of water on the table waiting for you. The table really won't have anything on it. We are still nevertheless giving all of the water stations um, a number of empty cups, just in case there's any runners who forget their cup or lose their cup or whatever. So they will have empty cups. They won't have been pre-filled. If you need an empty cup, ask. You'll have to wait. They will fill it for you. And then after that, keep that cup with you and run with it on the rest of the run and, and have it refilled. Uh, that's cups. So flexible start times. This is the real key this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier, no mass start times. So with the flexible start times, in effect, you can choose what time that you actually want to start within limitations. So look on the website and there's actually a list there which tells you um, the earliest that you can go. So if you're, um, if you're going to be walking or if you're going to be running rather slowly, then you can actually go very, very early. If you are an elite runner and you really are going for the fastest possible time, we would recommend that you actually wait to the very end. Um, the reason is that the early starters are actually being started with about a half an hour extra early start on top of the early start time. What that means is that the majority of the early starters will actually get to the finish line before the majority of the fast runners. So if you're a fast runner and you leave in the middle, the difficulty you're going to have is you'll have these overtaking situations where sometimes you won't be able to overtake. You'll just have to walk or jog or you, know, you will lose time. If you decide to go at the latest possible start time, the advantage is you still should get a fairly clear run right the way through. So as an example, if you are doing the marathon and if you are estimating your fastest possible time to be 3 hours 30 minutes, that means the earliest you can leave is 10.02, 2 minutes past 10. Do not leave earlier than your earliest start time. If you leave earlier than your earliest start time, you will cause all sorts of problems. So please do not leave earlier than your start early start time. So if you are someone who's estimating 3 hours 30 minutes on the marathon, you can start as early as 10.02 or you could decide to wait until 11 o'clock. And the advantage if you wait until 11 o'clock, as I say, is you'll be able to get a much faster run. Um, I'm anticipating that about two thirds of the people in the event will actually opt to go early. So they'll go around the earlier start time. And I think probably about one third of you will actually elect to go right at the very end. So the early ones who are going, you will basically um, process through the, the process area when you first arrive. Um, it's a continuous, we won't really have lots of crowds sort of waiting around. Then you go out onto the field where there's lots of space and there from there you will wait until your approximate time to go and you'll go and you'll basically all be going across the line um, spread out. We can actually have two going across at the same time. If you're in a social bubble obviously you can go together but otherwise you should sort of go where, where you've got a reasonable distance, um, you know, more than two metres obviously if you, if you could let the runner um, be at least five meters in front of you before you shoot off. So I suppose that's probably about three seconds. So we can probably have two people going over the line every three seconds if we needed to, but we should be able to spread them out even, even more than that. So um, flexible start times, it's all spread out um, and that's going to really help us with the social distancing type thing. Um, when it comes to overtaking, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the rules are that um, well, the first thing is on the really wide sections, 
it's absolutely no problem at all. And that's 90% of the course. On those narrow sections, the rule is no overtaking unless the person in front of you finds a place where they can pull over, let you pass with a two metre distance and, and it's all fine. Um, but please do not pressurise whoever's in front of you. Um, and, and if you are the person in front, do not feel pressurised. The person behind you will, will let you know that they've um, that they've arrived because sometimes when you're actually running along, you don't hear the people coming up behind you. So you, you'll probably have the person coming up behind you will politely let you know that they've caught up with you and they'd like to overtake. You need to just acknowledge that so that they know you are aware of it. And then you just keep on running at your pace until you find a place where you can actually pull over. Um, and when you're comfortable about a place where you can pull over, if you can pull over, let them sail on past and then that'll be great. So I'm hoping that this will work out fine without any problems. We certainly don't want to have, have any runners fighting each other or anything like that. So politeness, it's the real key at all times, please. It's very important. Um, buses. Buses. Where's my bus sign? I've got a bus sign here somewhere. No, that's right. I mentioned it before, didn't I? So the buses, I think we've already covered, so I don't really need to cover that again. So um, uh, the buses are there, but please do try and not use them if you can. If you've got someone else who can give you a lift in your social bubble, so to speak, then that's great. That's the buses. Um, bags. Okay, so we are still doing the bag service, so please bring your bag with you. We don't provide plastic bags anymore, um, although, of course, we will have a few just in case anybody forgets. But I'm quite sure, I think last year everybody bought their own bags, it wasn't a problem. So when you get to the start line, you'll be given a tag, which you can write your race number on and attach that to your bag. The bag bus will then bring your bag back to Winchester. And after you've processed through the, the finish line at Winchester, you'll be able to pick up your bag and carry on through. Um, one thing to note is that we haven't got uh, changing rooms at the starts or at the ends this time. So you need to bring warm clothes that you've got slipped over your running clothes. Um, and that again, that at the end, you can then slip them back over and then go home for a shower. We won't have the showers or the changing rooms or anything like that. Um, raincoats. Unfortunately, the forecast at the moment is indicating that we might have a little bit of rain. I'm hoping that we're going to have a nice sunny day, but who knows? So um, please bring a little lightweight raincoat with you and, and just carry it with you. Um, I'll certainly be taking mine anyway. That's important. Uh, cars. We have a number of road crossings. Um, some of them we actually have temporary, official temporary road closure orders. So you'll have barriers and cones and marshals and all the rest of it. Some of them we don't. The key thing about all of the road crossings is cars at the end of the day do have right of way so please make sure you look left and right um, and you know, so far we've never had an accident on any of the road crossings and we do want to keep it that way. Um, all of the road crossings do have marshals on um, and there's as I say there's lots of signs so the cars are becoming lots and lots of advance warning before they actually get there and I think that's why we never have any problem and we don't want to have any problems. That's cars. Signage as I think you're probably starting to realise now, we have lots of signs. In fact, we have about 500 arrows that are either pointing that way or that way or that way. Um, we have little arrows and big arrows, uh, so you shouldn't get lost. Most of the time, you should be able to see an arrow that's further on down the line. We have lots of confidence arrows. We also have marshals pretty much on every single junction. I don't think we lost anybody last year. Um, but but always keep a look where you're actually going. Follow the arrows and and follow where the marshals tell you to go. Hopefully you should be fine. That's great. Because um, the marshals, all the marshals are volunteers, and we want them to come back next year. So please make sure as you're running past the marshals, say thank you, marshal. Okay, thank you, marshal. Very important. We want them to have a good time as well. Um, we are still looking for more marshals, so if you've got any friends who could possibly do some marshalling, please do put them on to us. We, we do like to get as many marshals as we can. We, we always want to have contingency in depth, contingency in numbers, so if somebody drops out somewhere on the line, we've still got more people to, to, to fill the gap. Um, so if you've got anyone else who'd like to be a marshal, please contact us, we'll find a location for them. It's a great day out, you know, they can take a bit of a picnic. Even if it's raining, um, if they take an umbrella, raincoat, rain trousers, all the rest of it, um, it, it's a great time. That was the very first Clarendon that I was on. I was actually marshalling, I wasn't actually running. It was great, I enjoyed it. Drink stations. 
I've covered okay so make sure you bring your own cup um, emergencies okay so we've got about 200 marshals all the way along the route and at the various start locations and so forth if you have a problem um, please stop and talk to a marshal if there isn't a marshal stop to a runner stop a runner and ask a runner for help and try and get to, um, to a marshal the marshals will then try and get one of the ambulances we have three st john's ambulances on the actual route um, uh, that are there traveling traveling with us so we've got lots of backup there if you've got a real serious problem you know like you've broken a hip or something like that which did happen once apparently about 10 years ago then the thing to do is to get someone to call 999 some places phones don't work so if you're in a place where phones don't work please use the other runners to get a message down the line remember if the phones don't work we've got lots and lots of runners so I know that sounds a bit old-fashioned when you think about communications but we can still use runners as communications so we shouldn't have a problem the the biggest risk we think is if we get someone who's not feeling well and then they decide they want to go into the woods and go to the loo the first thing is don't go in the woods to go to the loo because we have got various toilets along the way um, but the second thing is if you're not feeling well and you go into the woods and sit down or lie down or pass out we won't find you we don't well we do count the runners in and we count the, count the runners we count the runners out and we count the runners in and usually every Clarendon is about a dozen people who don't make the end um, we don't go back and look for them and we have no idea what happens to them um, so we don't go looking for people who don't turn up at the end so whatever you do do not go into the woods regarding the toilets there are toilets at various locations that's all written on the website please do have a look at that and there is also toilet signs have I got a toilet sign? I have. So um, we've got these signs out here that says toilet. So if you see one of these signs, you know that there's a toilet probably coming up. Generally, they're portalies, um, which have been put out there. So that should be fine. Um, no spectators this year. Um, we don't have very many spectators anyway, but because of the COVID regulations, it, it is no spectators. No spectators at the beginning, no spectators at the finish line. It's not a good idea for spectators to drive around in cars in the middle either because um, the, the roads tend to get fairly congested. So if you've got any friends who want to be spectators, please tell them, wait for the movie to come out afterwards. That's the best way to spectate. Or uh, volunteer to be a marshal. If, if they volunteer to be a marshal, we can give them a location and they can spectate well and truly and see every single runner. And as I say, marsh, marshalling is quite good. Um, I think those are the main things. We I mentioned that the food stations aren't the water stations aren't having food this year we have got some um, nut bars and so forth supplied by Bocker um, and we've got those just in the last couple of stations just in case you 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 really are in need of food but it's best if you bring your own food those nut bars at, at towards the end will actually be wrapped up in veggie wrapped plastic things so they should be secure from a COVID point of view and we will also have lots of those nut bars at the end we may have some bananas from Fife's. Fife's have been kind enough to give us some bananas each year, but we're not sure at the moment whether we can get those or not. We have at the end, hopefully, got the tea and coffee stand like we've had most years and also the hamburger stand. So we've got the hamburgers. We've got Sean doing the, the hamburgers and he's also doing some vegetarian um, alternatives as well. Um, talking about that, the end's very different to what it's been previously. Previously at the end, we have a sort of a village affair but that's not what you're going to find. You're going to come down through the actual finish line. You're then going to go into a long zigzag, a very long zigzag, so that you can be in the zigzag socially separated. Then you're going to go into the t-shirt tent, and there's going to be ladies' t-shirts on one side, men's t-shirts on the other side. It tells you in great big signs what size of t-shirt it is. You won't have time to go and start picking them up and trying them for the best size this year, I'm afraid. Okay, so as you go through pick the t-shirt size that you think is going to best suit you and then keep moving we've got to keep the, the queue moving in we anticipate that we'll have a period from about 1.15 to about 2.15 where we're going to have runners coming in approximately one runner every six seconds okay so we've worked out that we can manage that but we've got to keep the flow so you flow through pick up your t-shirt um, get some more water if you want there's no medals this year we haven't got any medals um, I have got some medals left over from last year so if we run out of t-shirts we, we can at least give you something um, so if you have a problem or, or if there's anything in particular come, uh, come and see me I'll, I'll be on the half marathon myself 
um, I'll be arriving sort of in the middle and then I'll be there the rest of the afternoon. So you carry on through there, you then go up the steps and you go down to the gymnasium and that's where your bag will be. The bags will all be in great big lines, they'll be in numerical order. You basically pick up your bag and then you go out the other door from the gymnasium outside and then outside that's where you can slip your warm clothes on again. That's when you will find yourself pretty much at the front gate. Um, the teas and coffees and the hamburger stand will actually be just in the next little car park outside the you go outside the front gate and then into the car park by the tower um, and that will be there in that general area is where the buses will come in to take people off um, to uh, the shuttle buses to take them back to the main car park and also it's an area where we're keeping it so that people can come and pick you up if you've got someone picking you up there should be enough cars parking space there for them also for the relay running teams okay so if you're arranging for someone to pick you up they can drive in there pick you up and then drive out we need to obviously disperse people as quickly as possible so um, by all means stay around to have a, 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 a cup of tea or coffee or some cake or a hamburger because you know, I'm conscious of the fact that you'll all be low on food um, but but please don't congregate we need to make sure that we maintain that that two meter social distancing um, what else have we got? Prizes. We have still got prizes like previous years. Uh, they're the little trophies. There's going to be a separate table for the prizes towards the end. To start off with, we're going to have no idea who's actually won uh, the various categories because remember you're all coming in at different times and the, the people who actually win the prizes will actually be coming in later on rather than earlier on. Um, Simon and the timing team has set up a page on um, his website which you'll be able to see will start to update and it will tell you who's winning in the various categories and by about 2.30 the list of winners on his on his list should be pretty stable so from 2.30 you can pop along and actually pick up your, your prize if you've got one we've also got the 5 year trophies and the 10 year trophies 15 year trophies and I think this year we've got a 20 year trophy as well um, I've asked everybody to contact me just so I can put you on my list so I've got an idea of how many people want to pick up those trophies. Um, if you forget, don't worry, we have still got a few spare, but please if you want to pick up a 5, 10, 15 or 20 year trophy um, award, please contact me. Just drop me a line, jj at clarendon-marathon.co.uk, just so I can put you on my list so we can got a good idea how many people are going to be picked up. That's good. And t-shirts. T-shirts I've already mentioned. Okay, so we are doing T-shirts this year. We haven't got a date on them. My apologies, but obviously, um, when we decided should we have T-shirts or not have T-shirts, we thought well the thing to do is to have it without a date, and then if we have to cancel, then we can get them next year. But um, at the moment, we've only now got a few days to go. We're we're, we're definitely all on. I think cancelling is still possible, but unlikely. Um, and parking. Please do not park on any of the streets around King's School. Okay, the, the best place if you're running, if you're out running for the whole day, the best place to park is is either at South Winchester Park and Ride and get the bus across, or park your car at the start location in Broughton or um, Salisbury, where you'll be directed. This sign saying park your car here, sort of thing. But around King's School, please do not park on any of the side streets. Um, for the relay teams, um, we have got the actual King School car park um, where all the, the teachers park normally in the day. That's most of that should be available. And there's also a, a little park car park down at Monarch Way, one of the council car parks, um, which um, you can also park a car. And so hopefully we should be okay. But if you're a runner, please do not park your car at um, um, at King School. You should park it down at South Winchester Park and Ride. And I think that is everything. So I would like to um, say thank you to everybody for um, you know, booking and running with us. Oh, of course, one last thing. Responsibility and liability. Um, signing up for the Clarendon Marathon means that you accept that there is... Um, uh, you know that we are not accepting any liabilities. We, we're organising the event the best we can, but running a marathon is not safe. Um, if you're running with us uh, we assume that you accept that um, and obviously we're all volunteers we don't want anyone to sue us afterwards uh, but if you've got any queries about responsibility and liability please do contact me or look at the website it's all written down there so 
as I was just about to say, many thanks for supporting us this year. I hope you have a really, really good run. Um, please do everything regarding social distancing and so forth. And remember, with the fact that so many runs have been cancelled, we need to make sure that the Clarendon this year really does go like clockwork. We want all that social distance to be perfection. And we want afterwards, we want lots of people to say, this was really great. It's great that we're all in a difficult time together with COVID, but it's great that we're actually able to do this where we get out and about, we get some exercise um, and, and we have an enjoyable time and we do it in a way which is, which is responsible. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. Thank you.